Have you ever, um, <laughs> have you ever held a loaded gun? Because <laughs> um, if you have, you'll know that uh, it is a great feeling. Yeah. I bet even if you're opposed to people being able to own guns, you'd be surprised at how much fun they are to hold. <laughs> to hold and point. Yeah. Well, you may never get to find out now that handguns are illegal over here. Which prevents me from bringing my real gun with me tonight, which is a shame. But uh, I do have here an exact replica, which I'm going to pass around for each of you to hold. And I want you to use your imagination, pretend that it's real, pretend it's loaded, and um, maybe try pointing it surreptitiously at one of your neighbors before <laughs> passing it on. Yeah. But most of all, I want you to enjoy yourselves, okay? So, but seriously, do be careful, because that is real. <laughs> no, just kidding, it's not, it's not. Okay, so thinking about where we come from and where we're going, it kind of begs the question, why do we keep killing each other? Yeah, and I don't mean one here, one there. I mean, why do we keep killing each other on an industrial scale? Are we just hopelessly violent and destructive by nature? Or is it, is it just the times that we're living in, you know? If we lived in better times, would we be better people? Or maybe, maybe if we lived in harder times, you know? They say the Blitz was a strangely wonderful time. The Nazis thought the bombing campaign would just crush the spirit of the British public, but instead, it was kind of a booster shot. People pulled together, they helped each other out, they forgot lesser differences, and in the wake of that, they created socialism. <coughs> Then a few years later, there was more to go around, less immediate danger. <coughs> People started to put on a little extra weight. And Thatcherism. You know, I'm finding it hard to really work out what kind of times I'm living in from Bush and Blair. Because <coughs> they're, so, they're so different, right? <coughs> Have you ever read any twin studies? You might have. Um, I got really into them when I was about 12, when these guys called the Jims appeared on The Tonight Show. Now, the Jims were identical twins who had been separated at birth and adopted by two different families and raised hundreds of miles apart, never knowing of each other's existence. And then when they were 40, they found out that they had an identical twin brother. Now, when they were reunited, they looked nearly indistinguishable, which wasn't a big surprise, but Interestingly, they both had the same medical history. They both suffered from high blood pressure, migraines, hemorrhoids, lazy eye. Both chain smoked Salem cigarettes. Both bit their nails. Both had put on the same amount of weight at the same age. Both followed stock car racing. Both disliked baseball. Both had a carpentry workshop in their garage. And both had built a white seat around the trunk of a tree in the back garden. <laughs> Both took their holidays at the same Florida beach every year. Both named their first child James Allen. Both had dogs named Toy. Both had wives named Betty. Both had divorced women named Linda. <laughs> Spooky, isn't it? Well, the twin thing really got me to thinking because up until then, I had held my parents more or less accountable for my looks, but my personality I regarded as entirely my own invention. But this twin thing seemed to suggest that your personality could be hereditary, too. <laughs> that if you crack that code, you'll find them lurking there. Mom and Dad. Scary, isn't it? <laughs> well, psychologists define personality in five dimensions. Openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. Ocean for short. <laughs> In each of these five dimensions, it turns out that heritability is very high. So for an example, <clears throat> identical twins separated at birth will show remarkable similarity, whereas adopted siblings raised together, they'll show little similarity. But interestingly, despite the strong genetic influence on personality, the sense of humor does not seem to run in the family, or not genetically speaking anyway. So 
adopted siblings raised together will have very similar senses of humor. <sighs> Whereas identical twins raised separately will tend to have rather different ones. <sighs> so the sense of humor, along with uh, religious affiliations and political attitudes, seem to be viral rather than genetic in nature. You catch them from the people around you. So your mother was right to worry about you falling in with the wrong crowd. We're very susceptible, easily led. Which is kind of ironic when you consider that the human brain is the most complexly organized structure in the universe. I mean, the number of possible brain states in your head alone is greater than the number of elementary particles in the known universe. But even so, how many times have you gone against your own better judgment? Just gone along with the crowd. You know, considering our tremendous mental capacity, human beings are terribly easily talked into the most ridiculous things. Curly perms. <laughs> Low-rise stretch jeans. Wearing white sheets out at night instead of staying home and sleeping in them. Following psychopaths in projects of genocide. Letting people who didn't get the most votes be president of the only remaining superpower and then voting for him the second time! <laughs> <laughs>